Angela coming to you from Heartfelt Creations. It's great to be back with you. If you and I have not met, welcome. Today we're going to share some of our top tips using some flower shaping, stamping, and we'll end it by putting it on a card. This is a glimpse at what you and I will be creating together. So with this, you'll be using the Sweet Peony Stamp and Die Set. Um, you'll see that this is a pretty dimensional, beautiful flower, and we'll end it up with doing some background stamping, adding a decorative die, and all that fun stuff. So with this, we're going to have um, the flower first, and I'll show you how I stamp that, and then we'll do some coloring and shape that. So if you have not done this before, let me know um, what you like about this. I'm going to start off by using the Magnes Blue ink. Um, and we're using the Large Sweet Peony Stamp and Die Set. Um, in this set, you have two of the largest sizes. Now, if you're like me and many crafters from all around the globe, um, you'll want both the large and small Sweet Peony um, if you wanna have all the sizes of the flowers and the leaves. So with this, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and ink up these flowers. Now, most of these flowers come with multiples connected so you can easily stamp them at one time. Um, I love this Magnes Blue, but what I really like about the stamping that I'm doing today is I'm doing a, a multi-colored variations. Um, so you can just go ahead, you can stamp those, and then you can go ahead and color them. Now, I typically go ahead and die cut this out um, like you see on these, and then I'll add a little bit of color around the edges. Now, I added just a small touch of the Magnes Blue around the edges, and then we're gonna shape them, and we'll add some more color to get the variations that you see on this beautiful flower here. So that's what we're gonna really focus on today. So with this, when you go to shape them, I'm doing kind of a two-step shaping today. Um, if you haven't used our flower shaping molds yet, this is what does it for you. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is the paper that I did stamp on is our deluxe flower shaping paper. If you don't have that paper, it is a 100-pound cardstock, and it makes that when you shape with the paper, it really holds its shape, and um, it's really stiff. And once it dries, after you've misted the water on top, um, it will really hold itself very well. Um, it doesn't break very easily, which is a very nice um, added benefit with that. So with this, you have that shaping mold. You just put the lid on, and then you put it through your machine. If you haven't used these before and you're like, wait a minute, I really want to learn how to use that, um, or if it goes through my machine, we have, if you go to the website at heartfeltcreations.us, you're going to see the mold section under the shop category and you can get the mold compatibility list there to see if your machine works with this as well. So that comes out, this is the basic shaping mold. Um, if you go to our website and you just type in the name of the stamp die or mold I'm using, that will bring it right up for you. Um, so that is the mold that I'm using today. Um, so when that comes out, this one is what we call our basics mold, which gives you a nice crinkled look, which is great. Um, and you could totally leave it just like that. But what I really wanted to do is show you how you can take that to the next level by adding just a little bit more depth and dimension in the petals. So with what we just completed, that gives you that basic. And then you can go back and you can do some more shaping to that if you like. So all you have to do is you can take, um, this is what we call the golf tool um, shaping. Um, if you type in golf tool into the search box on our website, or we'll also add the links to the products in the comments. Uh, but I am using the second largest size. You can just go back and you can just pull down in those petal tips just a little bit. Um, I personally like to bend the molding mat in half, or you can always you know, maybe purchase two mats if you like a thicker pillow so you have more dimension. Now this is a flower where you can really, um, I don't know, like it's super versatile. What I meant by this is like, you can get a lot of different looks and lots of different dimensions. So you'll just press down in the middle. So if you want something super dimensional, you'll just press down a little bit harder. So that is the basics of what I did to shape these flowers. So this is using, for the largest flower, I used the two largest sizes of the large sweet peony, and then I used the second largest size, and that's how we got those all together. Um, so once you're finished doing that, what I wanted to show you is how I added extra cuddle, color, not cuddles, <laughs> to these flower tips. 
Um, now you could use a variety of colors for the blue one with the Magnes Blue, I used the Cactus Flower, which is kind of a pinkish undertone, a little bit of purplish in there. And I just went back and I went over those petal tips and I added a little bit of that pink in there. I did it afterwards so that I could kind of highlight those creases and crinkles a little bit more. Um, so it's totally up to you if you want to do a little bit of a multicolored flower if you wanted to. Um, in the flowers that I'm using today for the card, I used a mixture of flowers. Um, so anytime I combine these for the largest one, I did the two largest ones and then the second size. And then I graduated to the small sweet peony set and I use a combination of these florals. Um, so when you go to the smaller sizes, you can do two of one size, one, and then for these, I just did two together of the same size, and the smallest one, I just did one layer. So these flowers, the pink, I did in Vibrant Fuchsia, and then I also tinged the edges a little bit with the Vibrant Fuchsia as well to get that bright pop of color. So if you do a mixture of color, it adds a little bit more of a depth and dimension into your flower shaping. So our next step is just going to be uh, putting the flower together. So if you haven't done this before, you're going to just pop in the center. Um, I like to make a pretty large hole. Again, I'm using the uh, golf shaping tools um, that has the ability to, has a paper piercer on one end. So you can kind of poke it all the way through and that will give you the beauty of a large hole that you can really add a beautiful flower stamen very easily. Now the stamens that I'm using today come from two different sets. I like to kind of mix and match. If you haven't used the stamens yet, these are super stunning. I use the rose hip stamens. These are pretty large. And then I also use the assorted pearl stamens and these are really tiny. Um, the assorted pearl small is also what I used for the smaller flowers in this set too. Now, if you um, have seen these and you're like, oh my goodness, I love these, but I don't have them yet, we have a special savings today for you, and that is you get a free stamp set with a purchase. So with your purchase, you get a free stamp set. Just enter that into the cart with your purchase and enter code 342138, and you'll get that one completely free, and that expires on July 18th. So make sure you take advantage of that before that expires. So when you go to put these through, you'll use those stamens. You'll pull that through the smallest flower first, and then just go right through the center. I personally like to have a really beautiful cluster of those. Um, now, if you are doing this flower and you want less dimension, you can always adjust the dimension based on how you like. So this is a flower that honestly, you have you can do so much, so much versatility with it. Um, so you can kind of hold this a little bit. If you want more dimension, kind of just kind of hold it up so that um, that glue bonds and kind of sticks. And you can always pull the stamens around a little bit if you wanna have it scattered a little bit more around the entire circle. And then you can go to your next size. Um, so this is the largest size. Um, and then we'll just pull those stamens through. So tell me what you're loving about this. Have you used the Sweet Peony yet? This is what I call one of our classic basic flowers. It's a flower that's very versatile and you can use for all occasions. So the, whether you want something that's super elegant and, and dimensional, um, like you can see on this card, um, this is really built up in the center, but then you also have the small ones on the side that are less dimensional. Um, so you can do these types of dimensions with any size that you prefer. So we'll go back and add the third layer. Isn't that beautiful? I just love how these turn out. So we'll go ahead and add that glue to the base. I like to use the hot glue um, because that really bonds very quickly and it makes that I can continue with my flowers very um, fast. So I don't really have to wait on that to dry, but you can choose which flowers you wanna use. Isn't that beautiful? Now, our next step, once you've built and assembled all those beautiful flowers, is you wanna put it on a card, or you could also, you can cluster as many or as little as you want. Now, this one, I did the full card. I'm going to layer this together um, in, I'll tell you kind of, okay, you could stop here. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to make our card base. So to make the card base, I used um, a couple different, uh, let's see here. Um, I used the Elegant Pocket Accents die. 
This is a beautiful die where I use this piece. It's a layering die. Um, and that's what I used for the card base. So I took this piece along with this piece to cut out the white border. And then I used the outline piece to cut out this one. And then to add the shape to the actual card base, all you need to do is, you can cut this card to whatever size you want. This is a five by five. You could do the six by six. You could do an A2 size card. Um, but with this one, um, I laid this on my card base. And then when I went to put this through the machine, the way I laid these plates down so it didn't cut all the way through on the top is I just laid the plate so it only covered the part of my die that I wanted to have cut through, which was exactly like this, ran it through my machine, and when that came out, that cut that card base so it's still attached. Isn't that cool? I love how that turns out. So before we glue anything down, we're gonna do a little bit of background stamping. Do you like background stamping? It's kind of a fast way to pretty much do your own background paper very easily. So I use the Peony Bud and Blossom set, and I use this large, beautiful flower right here. So the main area that we're going to see is this corner and this corner. So I went ahead and inked that up with a Vibrant Fuchsia. One mistake I made today is when I stamp, I like to have a, a stamp foam mat underneath my stamping surface to get a good stamped impression every time, and I forgot that. Um, so that is something I highly recommend um, if you put down, um, if you don't have one and you'd like to have a really good one, I just type in stamp mat pad into our search box and that will pop that up for you. Um, so you have that beautiful floral. If you wanted to have a second generation stamped, um, you could also, this is the uh, Vibrant Fuchsia ink, but you could also do that so it's a little bit lighter if you want more of a pastel background. Um, or you could always do a, um, you know, multiple colors as well, which is kind of fun. So again, if you uh, have a stamp set you see that you would love but you don't have yet, um, you get one for free with a purchase. Um, just enter code 342138 and enter the stamp that you want for free and that expires on July 18th. So once you're finished doing this, you're ready to add this piece. So again, this is the Elegant Pocket Accents die. And any of the items that I'm using, if you're like, wait a minute, where does that come from? Um, I'll add the link below in the comments and you can also ask me a specific question if you're like, oh my goodness, I don't see something. Um, just ask away and we'll get those questions answered for you. Um, I am using a glue that I love to use for intricate dyes, also for glittering, but um, this has a very fine tip and it's industrial strength. So once it's dry, it adheres very beautifully and you can get the glue exactly where you're wanting it. So we'll just pair this together and then you can go ahead and just glue this right to your card base. And then you're ready to assemble your flowers. See how pretty that is? Um, I will go ahead and just enter um, a pattern paper on the inside. This is from our butterfly collection. Love this paper collection, I have used it so much. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I always like to put the largest flower down first. Now, if you wanted to, you could always start with a smaller flower too, totally up to you depending on what you wanna do. Um, but if you're using this size, I pop that one down first and I've just added a layer of the glue. For leaves, we have a couple different leaves that are great. The Sweet Peony comes with some. Personally, I typically have leaves that are already done and created, so I can just grab from them. And I wanted to use the Calla Lily leaves along with some other classic leaves that we had. So those are the leaves that I'm using today. The Calla Lily leaves come with a mold that shapes it like what you see here, which is absolutely stunning. It does an, an incredible um, shaping to that so you get incredible detail that would be really really hard to get with hand, by hand. Um, so you'll continue that and you'll just layer these um, if you're not confident with just placing these in and layering them yourself you could always lay it out take a picture and then you can take it off again and layer it in however you like um, so you can do whatever you are comfortable with. Um, and then you just finish it off with the rest of the flowers and leaves. Um, sometimes I'll pop a couple flowers in and then some leaves and then just kind of continue that process until everything is completed. 
Um, so you can do as many flowers or as little flowers as you like. Um, you could stop right here um, with this amount of flowers. You might want to add you know, another pink one in there. Um, I typically like to end with an odd amount, so like five. I like to do like five or seven. Um, so we might just pop this one in and then we'll add a couple more leaves in there just to finish that off. So um, the leaves, if you are looking for leaves and you don't have some, we have some beautiful ones that I think you'll love. You can just type some the word leaf in our search box and that'll bring a different varieties that we have. We have a very classic leaf um, that has lots of different styles in it that I like for all occasions, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, but you might see some more styles that you really love. Um, so we'll just continue. I just kind of pull them apart and add them as I like. And then I just kind of go from there um, until I feel like it's finished. And then um, I typically, if I don't know who I'm going to give the card to, I will just leave the sentiment off until I know. Um, and then you can go back, you can glitter that, you can add some beautiful detail to it. So you can see a little bit of the difference between these two, just based on how I cluster those flowers together. Um, so that is the basics to using this, the um, Sweet Peony, the quick and easy way. So hopefully this was helpful to inspire you to create some beautiful one-of-a-kind projects. Before I go, I wanted to share you a couple more samples and just show you again the products I use. It's a small Sweet Peony stamp and die set. Then I also use the large Sweet Peony stamp and die set. And again, just remember when you make a purchase, um, you qualify for a free stamp set. Enter code 342138 and that expires on July 18th. Um, I used the Elegant Pocket Accents for the bottom of the card flap and then the shaping mold, which is really beautiful with a lot of the basic flowers that we have. If you love background stamping, uh, this one is a beautiful add-on for the peony. Um, so before I go, let's look at some samples. And this is the one I had showed a little bit earlier, so you can see some beautiful ways to create with this one. Um, here's another one. If you like something that's super simple, not to, super dimensional, this is a stunning color combination. I think you'll absolutely love trying something like that out be based on your personal taste. Um, here's another one. I love how this one turned out with this full peony flower there. Um, and then here's another one just with some basic like kind of classic um, with that gold frame, which is really pretty too. So hopefully this inspires you to create some of your one of a kind um, peonies. And if you don't have that one yet, make sure to get yours. Um, you get a free stamp set. Just enter this code um, when you are shopping at heartfeltcreations.us and do that by July 18th and you'll get that one completely free. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. We'll see you next time. Bye.